Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we're going to talk about the camera that creates the best possible footage and the most versatile footage when riding electric wheels. The Insta360 ONE X2. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. First of all, also big thanks to Insta360 themselves for reaching out to me and providing uh, this camera for testing purposes and also for me to keep. I also received a couple of other goodies so I can really show you how a unicorn mount works like. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've been actually using their camera since April 2019 already with the Insta360 ONE X. So I have a fair amount of experience uh, with them and I would probably get this anyways at some point. So again, thanks to Insta360 for providing me this camera so I can show it to you guys and also use it on my footage. I also do have a affiliate link now and they have a Black Friday or some sort of huge sale coming up now and it ends at the 14th of December. So you can get a free invisible selfie stick when purchasing a Insta360 and you also do support my channel if you buy a camera using my affiliate link. So if you're interested in that the link is below. So before we get into the camera itself and all the accessories, how it works, what are its specs, what are its capabilities, I'm going to first show you some footage recorded with the Insta360 ONE X2 to properly feature what it's capable of when riding electric wheels and when recording your footage.
All right, so now that you've seen what is possible with this camera, you might ask yourself, how is it even possible? And 360 cameras in general have the amazing capability of recording everything that is around you. That's why it's called 360. So essentially, both of these lenses are recording everything that's around them. And later on, if you're in your software, you can decide where your camera is pointing at. Now, now that's one way of um, exporting footage from a 360 camera. But the other way is also that you can export a full 360 image. So you can export a video on YouTube, which is sort of like a VR experience. And that's also something I'm going to do in the future. And because it's 360 and because you can later on edit your footage and and see sort of everything that the camera has seen when you were recording, it's almost like you are a camera operator after the fact. And the great thing about it is that you can also change your field of view. So you have like a really wide angle shot or you have a very narrow shot and you can even export the same clip, sort of the same timeline that you recorded twice, just with different perspectives. So you have like two shots just from one camera or actually infinite amount of shots possible, which is really cool. And thanks to that, in comparison to, for example, a GoPro, you never sort of miss a shot. Sometimes I have the issue that I have the GoPro on my helmet and it's just pointing a bit too much down or something interesting happened when I had the uh, GoPro on the selfie stick behind the GoPro and I just don't have this footage and with the Insta360 I do have it. Now the resolution won't be said the same as for example on the GoPro because this is 4K and this is just you know the field of view it has it's not like a spherical image and this is 5.7K uh, but the whole thing, like the whole frame that records the whole sphere. So when it comes to just the resolution, this will be less and it exports, just at least on my iPad, uh, the framing, I think in 1080p. But even with that lower resolution, I think that the footage is still very, very interesting and also much crisper than, for example, on the One X that I had before. So you saw a couple of shots in this video before and let me also explain how they came to be. For example, the shots where you see sort of like a drone hovering around me is just this camera with an extended selfie stick and I'm just essentially pointing it around me. So the camera on the pole is actually like the flying drone. You can also make the pole shorter to have more of a close-up view and then you can make the field of view wider. Uh, you can point it upwards, you can point it downwards, but it will always have the right framing because it's a 360 camera. It's also pretty cool to record the footage of other people riding. So then you have sort of like a drone and, and you can get really creative uh, with it. For example, if you will be going next to a path just on a different height it really looks like drone footage but you can also get really up close and uh, catch some details of a rider next to you it's also in that matter the best camera to take on group rides because it always sees everything when it comes to some other shots on this video i've been also using this deadly looking <laughs> carbon fiber I, I believe it's looks like carbon fiber unicorn mount and it has also like a bigger adhesive uh, part here on the helmet and, and essentially i just screw in the camera here on top because it has a quarter inch mount and then in the software i could make the camera just sort of look at me uh, and this is then the frame uh, where you can see sort of like a mini drone hovering in front of me or just sort of like a third person view just from the front now we can also then select how low the camera is here and ideally you would also use this um uh, additional mount uh, that you can stick onto the helmet and then there is a small cord that prevents the camera from going even lower uh, but even without this if I tighten it just right it, it doesn't move a lot but but the footage you can get with this uh, unicorn mount is pretty pretty exceptional I find it really cool maybe I should also try doing it the other way or just mount it somewhere else my helmet anyways this gives you a lot of flexibility and free hands to do some awesome shots another thing I did is I used a clamp like this one uh, from GoPro and I also mounted a adapter so I can connect the camera to a GoPro mount so in this way I could just snap on this clamp onto the pedal of my EUC and get some creative shots there. Uh, 
and I also put the, this clamp onto two uh, areas of the foot plate and the insane thing about it is I just saw this camera just like rattling un underneath me and it was just crazy I was actually quite worried if the footage uh, would come out to be all right but the stabilization in this thing is just so insane it just looks really smooth on the final video. So that's another great thing about the 360 cameras. The stabilization is just much better than in this camera because once you turn it up, up to a certain you know, degree, it just flips around or at some point you won't see, like the lens will not be physically able to see what's in front of it. And with this one, it's always possible. And that's also how I created one time-lapse in this shot. And I also used this GoPro mount to mount the camera on my usual, oh, let me get it out, uh, on my usual mounts on my helmet. So uh, one uh, of the time lapses was just the camera on top of the helmet. This is also really useful if you want to make some nice time lapses in your city. And there's also useful software uh, in the Insta360 app I'm going to talk about later, um, where you can also create motion blur and all of that stuff. But this is sort of the best uh, setting of the camera if you just wanted to make footage of what's around you, not really you riding. And I also have another mount here in the front. Boom, like so. And then I can also get some creative shots of me riding the EUC, uh, just pointing downwards or just pointing at me. So that's that. A small thing to keep in mind here, uh, especially with the unicorn mount, I had some weird stitchings handily going on because the camera was a bit sideways. Uh, so it's best if the camera is actually pointed like this. But sadly, I can't change it because that's just how this thread here ends. So it will be always a bit like this and the stitching is just a tiny bit weird on my helmet, which is, of course, a downside. So with that said, that's how the footage in this first video montage was created. And personally for me, the by far the favorite use case for the Insta360 is the selfie stick. So, uh, you can also get like a longer sel selfie stick like this one and then you have even wider framing which is really awesome. Just, just, just keep in mind if you uh, put it to the side you might lose your balance. So take some getting used to it. It's be best to have it either in front of you or in the back of you. And if it's in the back of you just watch out not to put it down too low because you might scratch the lens. In, in some shots I also use the premium lens guard. Uh, which looks like this. This is an optional accessory by Insta360. So if you do some really extreme shots, um, this is um, really useful not to scratch up the lens. However, the quality, especially in low light conditions, takes a pretty big hit. So in broad sunlight and in like extreme writing situations, I would recommend to use one or there's also other types uh, on their website but in general to have the best picture quality you just use it bare sort of bare lens <laughs> like you have it uh, which is always a, a bit concerning because uh, to change the lens here it's really difficult it's not just like screw out but you have to actually send, send it to China to repair. Uh, I actually did that two times with the Insta360s I, I had before uh, and it's possible to do it, it just takes a while, which is a bit annoying. I wish they had some sort of like screw in module to just change the lens in, in case of it breaks. But they also do have some sort of insurance policy or sort of like an all inclusive plan for like 40 euros. So maybe that's a thing you might like. When it comes to what you get in the camera, essentially you get a pouch, which is very similar to the pouch uh, I had before with my Insta360 ONE X, and then you just plop it in because these these lens elements need to be protected at all times because it's essentially resting on the lens if you if you put it anywhere keep it in the pouch but you can also buy a cover like this one on their side which is actually really cool because then you can still charge up the camera like if you open the door um, before you close up the lens guard boom like so as you can see here, the charging is USB-C, so that's something I really like. And 
and the doors are sealed as well as the door for the battery and the rating of this camera is IPX8 so you can be pretty chill when riding in rain and you can even dive with it down to 10 meters of depth which is pretty awesome uh, this is now the new battery and a thing that i noted with the new camera is that it has so much more battery life than the old one essentially i was just like riding around i was doing time lapses i was doing slow mos uh, and it was just not running out of battery just by comparison let me show you the old one so this is the old battery it's so much smaller than than the new one 1630 milliamp hours and this one is 1200 milliamp hours but in real life use cases the one x2 just has so much more battery life than the one x it's really really noticeable and just if you're considering buying either one of these two just for the battery life and for the water uh, proofing because this isn't waterproof it's worth to get the one x2 over the one x in my eyes so now let me talk a bit about the controls on this camera on the side here we have a on off button and this button also serves like a lock button if the camera is on you can just like lock it unlock it and if you really want to record some footage quickly you just press on this button here and it starts recording right away yeah it's already turned turning on um, yeah and it turns on and starts recording right away which is really cool now i will stop that there's also a pretty loud speaker which notifies you about everything and i find it to be very useful too because then when you're riding you can always hear what's happening so in the middle there is a display and here you can sort of see what your frame is and your frame is everything here you can see yourself hello hello viewer that's how you look like and uh, most of the gestures here are pretty standard. So when you swipe down, you have the modes, time-lapse, photo, and standard mode. One thing I'm missing here is bullet time, but I'm gonna talk about that later. Uh, then when you swipe to the side, you have some exposure settings and color settings and etc. etc. I basically left it in auto and in vivid mode, so the colors are very vivid. To this side, you have the gallery and you can check out what footage you made before. Boom. And you can also delete some stuff here. And you swipe to the top, then you have some further settings. And the cool thing is that it also tells you which those icons are. So, if I, so for example, if you press here, there's the LED, here is the quick recording, etc., etc. some settings. You can also connect it to your AirPods, but I didn't manage to connect it to my AirPods Pro, but maybe I'll do that in the future. So. Um, if there's any video with the AirPods recording, I'll tell you about it. And on the main screen, you can also select uh, your resolution. So 5.7K is in 30, 25 and, 4, and 24 frames per second. 4K is possible, as you can see here, in 50 and 30 frames per second. So with the 50 frames per second, you can have sort of like a slow motion. And with 3K, um, you can have a slow motion up to 100 fr frames per second. But this will be just a big hit on the resolution. But if you want to have something really slow-mo, then that's it now for you know just getting slow-mo specific shots in just one area i would rather get like a gopro which has like 240 frames per second in still decent resolution this is more of like getting the right shot which wouldn't be possible with uh, a gopro so here you can also press to record just 180 degree footage and it changes the resolution too wouldn't really you know use it with this camera maybe with the one r which has like a frame uh, which is more similar to like an action camera that you can mount on your chest uh, wouldn't really use it with uh, this one uh, you can also change uh, the view to see what the other lens is seeing so that's basically it when it comes to the settings of the camera the camera is really rugged it feels nice it feels premium in general the packaging of insta360 is very solid and very sort of premium i wouldn't imagine that this box gets damaged during shipping because it's very solid there's a small accessories box and there you can see that there is a cable usb a to usb c and usb a to usb micro don't really know what the micro is for but i guess it was here and i'm, I'm missing a usb c to usb c cable but you can also get that um, later there's also no charging brick but you can charge this with any of the charging bricks you have at home additionally when it comes to the accessories i got 
I also got the lens cover, which came in a small box that I don't see now. It was a good box. <laughs> There's also the unicorn helmet mount, which I have shown you here, made out of carbon fiber. And the bullet time selfie stick is really cool because you can use it both as a selfie stick, really quick to expand to, kind of quite smooth. And you can also use it as a tripod. So you can also sort of use the camera just screwed on here on top and it will be actually your camera operator. So not only can you have um, pretty insane footage when you're riding and holding a selfie stick, you can also just put it somewhere if you're doing some tricks or if you want to have some stationary shots. And you can also get creative with selfie stick shots or with tripod shots using Insta360 app. Be sure to check out my Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. I'll probably try one of those features in the future. So yeah, this thing is really versatile and for like recording yourself, doing stuff, doing tricks, doing anything, um, this is sort of your one-man crew. Now you will notice that there's another knob here and you might be wondering why this is turning. Well, if you um, screw this out, the selfie stick part, and then screw it in on this side, you are, you have a spinny, spinner rudel thing. So you can actually block the thing from spinning if you're using it as a tripod, like screwing this in, now it won't spin. But if you screw it out again, now you can use it as the bullet time selfie stick. And then you can get some creative footage when you're just like spinner rudeling this thing over your head. Uh, one thing I have to comment about this mode is that usually it has the framing a bit too high up. So optimally I was using it in the vertical format because then you can see more of me actually and, and what's happening underneath me. Um, but if you're using the 16x9 format I find that a lot of interesting detail from the bottom of the frame gets lost. I wish that in the app you could control what is the framing of the bullet time mode. Now you can also just record slow motion without the bullet time feature and probably this is what I would do instead of using the bullet time mode because then you can actually frame yourself right. So another cool feature, especially if you want to record some slow-mo of a jump or some you know particles that are around you, although the particles can be too small because of the small resolution. It was snowing quite a bit for the frame you can see now, but you can't really see the snow that well because of the resolution of 3K in this picture mode. Now let's get into the workflow of using the Insta360 ONE X2. And for this, I'll be using my iPad Pro. Now, this is the only experience I have with editing footage and also with my phone. Um, I didn't use the desktop app because I just love how easy it is and how nice it is. Oh, by the way, I can see you, I have no socks on. How scandalous. Um, um, you can also see how easy it is to um, edit this footage. So uh, I, want you, I, I won't show you any more of my bare feet. Let's go into um, the footage that I've recorded on this camera. So now this is actually a feed uh, via Wi-Fi to uh, the footage I've recorded before. And then you can select sort of one uh, clip and this is also already being edited. So here the camera is on the stand and I've already edited um, the view field or the, the field of view that it may want to see. How, I, how did I do that? Essentially, I, I can delete this really quick. Boom. Essentially, I cl click on the plus button and then I have a couple options of selecting what um, the framing will be. Now, one, one thing I can do is I can select deep track and I just select myself and then I press start tracking and then the camera will do everything for me. I mean, not the camera really, just essentially the app. And as you can see, it's quite good at doing that, especially in like high contrast scenarios, but even here behind the trees, it's really good at picking up what I'm doing and recording all of the footage. So now I can stop tracking that. Uh, by the way, if you're doing slow-mo, it will do the tracking in slow-mo, so just something to keep in mind. And now I can actually select what is the field of view here. So I can select wide, linear, or narrow. So let me select narrow right quick. Can I select narrow? Oh yeah, here, oh, sorry, I have to select the crib. 
clip. So here I can select a tiny planet, ultra wide, wide, linear, and narrow. So then let me just see how it would look like in narrow. That's the tracking in, in narrow. So that's really cool. And if you're just and you if you just want some footage edited quickly and with the help of AI, I guess, uh, this is a cool option, especially in ultra wide and wide. But if you don't want to do that, my favorite option by far to edit these videos is with um, the viewfinder. So here you're using the accelerometer of the iPad or of your phone to see what the camera sees. So you're actually being the camera in, well, I can't really see that well, uh, but here you are actually living through the camera's lens, which is kind of insane. And you can just turn around and see what has been recording. And this is sadly what also happens. Sometimes the app just crashes and then I have a bit of trouble to reconnect with the camera. Let me get back to you in a second. So now we are back at it with a different clip and here I select viewfinder and here I can select the field of view I want to have, narrow to wide. And I can also just point the iPad at whatever I want to see. And then if you press OK, you can see what changes have been done. And this is like just by using the accelerometer and the selection of field of view in the camera. And that's how you can get the awesome shots using uh, this camera. So these are my favorite ways to edit the footage here. And here you can also select the uh, aspect ratio, nine by 16, 16 by nine, whatever you find useful. It would be cool if they would also include four by five at one point. You can make snapshots, you can use different angles at the same time. There's also some other uh, useful features like uh, the speed. You can also use that for making like a hyperlapse and then use the motion blur. I don't know if the preview will be right here, but I can show you some footage. Oh, yeah, I have to drag and select how long it will be. Boom. But I can select some footage uh, that I've already done, that I already edited before to see how the hyperlux looks like. Oh yeah, that's how it looks like. And you can also add motion blur to it, which is really cool. Uh, add some filters, adjust some parameters, and you can also record it in log. So then you can like color, gla color grade later. And you can also reset the edits, make some marks, I guess, delete. Um, the footage or download it. Now the coolest thing about this new app is that when you press on export It will export directly from the camera through Wi-Fi through the app onto your phone on or your iPad You can also select different bitrate and 125 megabits per second is really high So I believe that's also why the footage is better in the newest Insta360 uh, And you can also just export the raw 360 files and then if you press export, you can also select color plus for brighter, more vivid colors, and you can also remove grain. And if you press export, it will be exporting right away from the camera onto your iPad, which is really, really neat. It's also rather quick when it comes to export of all of these files. I don't know if it depends on my iPad or if it depends on the camera, but most of the time I didn't wait long to export a file. I don't know why it's 0% now. Maybe it's because of the hyperlapse. Here I'm exporting a different file with the bullet time selfie stick and as you can see the export doesn't take really long. Sometimes it crashes when exporting which is quite annoying and the camera also does get really warm when you use it over an extended time with, um, with this app. But the cool thing is that you can always charge it while doing that. You can also do one more thing uh, which is really interesting. Namely, you can check the speed you are going at. Uh, here you can see how it looks like. And the speed is, let's see if it's accurate. It has a bit of a lag, as you can see, because I start writing and then it goes with the speed up. But it's also way better than what I had in the Insta360 before. Uh, and to, in order to do that, you either need like a beacon or like a Bluetooth uh, GPS module. Uh, to to get the data or you can easily just connect it to your phone and your phone has to have the screen actually on. I didn't make it work when I had the screen locked as far as I remember. Let me see here. Yeah, the stats here are gone 
Oh wait, no, are they here? They're here. GPS data loss causing stats not working set. Yeah, so you have to have the screen actually on all of the time to um, and, and, and make sure you don't lock the fallen by accident to have all of these stats. And here on the video you can see all of the stats, speed, elevation, slope, here you can see sort of like the map where you were going at and the latitudes, which is also really, really cool. Of course, one downside uh, with this camera is that you have some additional workflow. You have to go over the footage again. You have to reframe it. You have to, you know, do all of the um, shots again, sort of. So if you want to have just like a camera that records everything and then you can just right away just cut it and publish it, then a 360 camera will naturally have more workflow than a usual one lens camera. So with that said, this is my take on the Insta360. I, I think that especially for wheeling around and doing some, you know, interesting shots or group ride shots, this is really uh, the camera to get. If you want to have just a bit more resolution or you want to have also better sound quality, and because this one you can't connect with like an external jack or like a media mod that I have on the GoPro, then it would be really cool to, to see that. Uh, I like the bigger battery here, I like the screen, but in general I didn't use the screen really that much. When I was going out with the camera, it's just a bit too, uh, too finicky to use with gloves, but in general it's very responsive, so if I wouldn't have gloves on, maybe I would use it a bit more. Nevertheless, I just use pretty much one setting, so I just use this button here. Uh, I don't do much more on it, and if I want to do something more, then I just connect it to my iPhone, and then I can see all of the settings much better than, for example, on this smaller screen. Huge thanks again to Insta360 for sending me out this video for testing and for me to keep. As said, there is a affiliate link below and there is a sale, so feel free to grab your camera because even though it costs a bit, I think for the use case that it does, it's kind of worth the money. In my use case, I found it to be really awesome and a good upgrade to the One X I had before. Now Monocat will use it. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.